Films are made up of sequences. Sequences are made up of scenes. And scenes are made up of shots. In previous episodes, we covered camera lenses, movement, and gear. But in this episode, we will discuss how different frame rates impact how we perceive motion and the speed at which motion appears on screen. This is episode eight of The Shot List. Frame rate. In this video, we'll include tips on how to manage frame rates in your projects. To help you avoid the common mistakes while creating something visually stunning. Now, first, let's frame this video. Cinema is built upon illusions. Sets recreate reality. Editing manipulates time. Visual effects do the impossible. But the first and most fundamental illusion is motion. Motion pictures are based on an optical illusion. Just another case where seeing is believing. Despite the name, when we watch a film, we are not seeing a motion picture. We are actually seeing multiple pictures, a series of still images. Playing back these images, or frames, consecutively, creates the perception of motion. There are a couple of theories on how this works. The phi phenomenon, beta movement, persistence of vision. But the short answer is that when images are shown fast enough, our brain loses the ability to see individual frames and blends them together into a single moving image. Persistence of vision is the principle which makes movies possible. Now, the number of individual frames that are shown within one second is known as frame rate. Frame rate is expressed in frames per second, or FPS. For example, a frame rate of 30 FPS contains 30 individual frames, or still photos, within one second. To shoot a narrative that emulates the look of traditional cinema, you will want to shoot at a frame rate of 24 FPS. When sound was first introduced to motion pictures... This is what the people want. Silent pictures are yesterday's news. The frame rate needed to be fast enough to utilize sound technology but slow enough to save money on the amount of film being shot. Its consistent use over decades has dubbed it the most cinematic frame rate. However, we've seen some notable exceptions over the last few years. The Hobbit was famously shot at 48 frames per second. The goal was to reduce motion blur and the eye strain of 3D presentation. Director Peter Jackson wanted to create a completely immersive audience experience. A hundred years ago, you know, movies were black and white, they were silent, they were 16 frames a second, okay? And so a hundred years from now, what are they going to be? I think you can absolutely guarantee they're not going to be 24 frames a second. So at what point between now and a hundred years do these advances actually happen? Director Ang Lee took this idea a step further when he decided to shoot Gemini Man at a whopping 120 FPS. It's a vision more closer to life. The experience is different. The perspective is different. Uh, you got a first person feeling, what would that be like? To me, it's a logical next step. However, since this video essay is presented at 24 frames per second, these clips you're seeing don't represent the look of higher frame rates. So, to get the full experience, you need to see it projected at an equal frame rate. Are these failed experiments or an evolution in filmmaking? Let us know in the comments. Had enough of dwarves for one day. 
Now, the additional frames in higher frame rates makes motion look smoother. But what about when cinematographers deviate from realistic speed to tell their story? Fast motion. Assuming you'll be playing back at 24 frames per second, simply put, lower frame rates can make motion look choppy because they lack frames. What's the point of doing it that way? For example, recreating the vintage look of old home movies. Or, adding a comedic element to the scene. In our previous video, director Jay Roach revealed this simple trick for creating fast motion. The way the fembot's heads explode, it's such a primitive technique. You just undercrank the camera to two frames. They move their heads around at normal speed, but because it's undercranked, it looks like they're just jerking around and short circuiting that, of course, their heads explode. Oops! I did it again, baby. Yeah! Now, let's look at another reason filmmakers shoot lower frame rates. This technique is called step printing. This is done by shooting a low frame rate, often with a slow shutter speed to create the blurring and streaking. Then the frames are copied and repeated to create 24 frames per second. For example, My name is Domino Harvey. I am a bounty hunter. In Tony Scott's Domino, they shot sequences at six frames per second, then printed each frame an additional four times to equal 24 FPS. I tried Beverly Hills High for a spell, but it didn't work out. I hated them. You can also find this effect in the films of Wong Kar Wai. What? In Gladiator. and music videos. The physical motion is at normal speed, but the amount of motion blur gives the impression of fast motion. Ideal to create a visceral and subjective presentation. For more on the relationship between shutter and frame rate, check out our other video on shutter speed, linked below. Now, let's look at the opposite effect. Slow motion. If we want to slow down the motion of something that goes fast, we speed up our camera and make, say, five times as many pictures per second. We have slow motion when they are shown on the screen at normal camera speed. Assuming you'll be playing back at 24 frames per second, to create a slow motion effect, you'll need to shoot at a frame rate higher than the playback rate. Say 48. 60 or even 120 FPS, which is called overcranking. <sighs> the higher the frame rate, the slower you can slow down footage while maintaining smooth motion and clarity. For the Matrix, shots were taken at speeds up to 300 FPS. You're empty. So are you. The opening credit sequence of Zombieland was shot at 1,000 FPS. The key thing to remember about slow motion is that it emphasizes whatever action or emotion you present it with. It can make horror more terrifying. Action more spectacular. Oh, great. or 
comedy more hilarious. <laughs> Filmmakers utilize these extremely high frame rates to capture motion that even the human eye cannot see. In this scene from The Hurt Locker, extreme slow motion is used to brilliantly capture an explosion. Thompson! High frame rates also enable filmmakers to utilize speed ramps, like in this iconic action sequence from Zack Snyder's 300. A speed ramp is an editing technique used to transition between varying speeds of motion in the same shot, where each strike is given extra weight and impact. To better understand the impact of slow motion on story, take a look at these two fight scenes. One is at normal speed, while the other is in slow motion. Creed ready to let his hands go. Creed misses and gets hit in return. First, distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Hard left hook for Conlon. Discombobulate. Dazed, will attempt wild healing. What does slow motion accentuate in this fight scene for the audience? We can write jaw. Reed spins, puts the champ in the corner. What does it take away? Throwing body shots like he's Rocky Balboa. Let us know in the comments. And now, as promised, some tips on how to manage frame rates in your projects. Pencils out. Double down, class. Double down. Deciding which frame rate to shoot at depends on what you want the final product to look like. <laughs> which we'll call the quality of motion. Such as normal motion, fast motion, or slow motion. However, the final frame rate we see on screen, we're actually seeing the relationship of two different speeds, which we'll call the capture rate and the presentation rate. Capture rate is how many frames per second were recorded by the camera, while your presentation rate is how many frames per second the audience sees in the finished film. For normal speed motion, the presentation rate must equal the capture rate. If you're shooting something with a lot of motion, like sports or concerts, you might want to consider shooting and presenting at higher frame rates, as the additional frames will make motion appear smoother. Acres out of the backfield. Remember, to achieve slow motion, you would shoot faster than 24 FPS. However, as you recall, Gemini Man was shot at 120 FPS for normal motion. Let's see what that looks like, slowed down to 24 FPS. The motion is completely smooth, but the duration and audio is stretched. Another reason why your presentation rate is so important. The opposite is true for fast motion. All you need is to shoot at a rate slower than 24 FPS, which is called undercranking. So, the main takeaway is don't mix frame rates if you want normal looking motion. Only mix frame rates if you intend to shoot high frames per second to create slow motion, or shoot lower frame rates to create a choppy, jittery aesthetic. Now, I know this is a lot of information, so for a complete breakdown on frame rates and all the practical ways you can experiment with them, we have an ultimate guide on our blog. The link is in the description. Remember, no matter how many frames per second you shoot, it is your presentation rate that matters. Discombobulate. Add your shot, its details, and specify the frame rate here. You can call attention to the specialty shot by color coding it to make sure the frame rate is cranked to the correct value. If you're ready to create a shot list, you can find a link to StudioBinder's free shot listing tool in the description. And remember that you are in complete control of your frame rate 
Have fun with it. You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Subscribe, click the bell, and find out what we do next. Nothing but the ghetto, taking short steps one foot at a time and get my head low.